is uh, type three. Right. And so, you're going to ask me some questions and then you can film me or something? That's exactly right. We're actually recording now. So oh. the, 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 the uh, smile, the uh, so. Hi, I'm Doug Melton. I'm the Zander University professor here at Harvard University. And I also co-direct the Harvard Stem Cell Institute. I started working in diabetes the same way many parents do when they find out that their child has diabetes. My six-month-old son, Sam, contracted type 1 diabetes, and then I did what, as I say, every other parent does. I said, I'm not going to stand by and watch this. I want to see what I can do about it. And I was fortunately in a very good position. I was already a tenured professor at Harvard, and I had a laboratory, so I could switch my work to focus entirely on diabetes. At the simplest level, there are two problems in type 1 diabetes. There's the immune system, which attacks and kills the beta cells, the problem known as autoimmunity. And then there is the obvious lack of the insulin-producing beta cells. I decided to focus on entirely on that second problem. Can we replace the missing beta cells? And that's what I've been working on for more than a decade. I think the thing that we're really very gratified by is it's taken us more than a decade to show that we can take stem cells, and everyone hears about stem cells now in the popular press, that we can take human stem cells and educate them or turn them into functioning pancreatic beta cells, the cells that are missing in type 1 diabetics. That, I think, um, could represent a watershed moment in diabetes because now for the first time we can make unlimited numbers of the cells that read blood glucose levels so you don't have to do finger pricks and squirt out just the right amount of insulin so you don't have to inject yourself with insulin. So now we're faced with the challenge of how do we transplant these cells into patients. So to run a lab like mine which has medical doctors, PhD students, graduate students, and undergraduates, obviously requires a significant amount of funding. In many ways, the most valuable funding is the funding from philanthropists, from donors like you, who allow us enormous flexibility. When we have a new idea, we can act on it next week. We don't have to have a new idea, then write a grant, wait six months, have a review committee decide whether or not it's a good idea, and then somewhere between nine months and a year later act on it. By the time a project clearly is going to work, for example, trying to industrialize the production of beta cells for transplantation, then it's possible to get larger sources of funds from the pharmaceutical industry, from the federal government. But it's exploring new ideas which requires philanthropic funding, unproven, high risk and high reward new ideas. I'm Dr. Doug Melton and I am Type 3.